Um, thank you very much for joining. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and, and get started, I think. I think we have everyone here. Um, so um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Vicki Toki. I've been with the church for quite a few years. Um, it'll be now almost 25 years um, next year. Yeah, time flies. And um, I wanted to start off the day today with a couple of just really short readings. Um, the first one is from um, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one through eight. And then I'll also read a very short poem um, from this book called The Heart of Autumn. So we'll start with the first reading. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And then I'm going to read a very short poem written by Carl Sandburg um, called Autumn Movement. I cried over beautiful things, knowing no beautiful things last. The field of cornflower yellow is a scarf at the neck of the copper sunburned woman, the mother of the year, the taker of seeds. The Northwest wind comes and the yellow is torn full of holes. New beautiful things come in the first spit of snow on the Northwest wind and the old things go, not one last. And so one of the, what I wanted to go through with all of you is um, a visualization practice that we'll go through. And this one is adopted from um, Courtney Archer, which is really about letting go of something to then allow something new to arise. And during this practice, we're gonna use a, a one word mantra. Um, and it's a, it's a Hebrew word, it's, um, it's um, Khalifa. And Khalifa means change and it, and it is used for two different purposes. One is actually a change of garments, but then also it can be a change to the course of life. And I thought both are very uh, applicable in this season of, of putting the shorts and tank tops away and bringing out the sweaters and the long pants, as well as changes that are happening in all of our lives. You know, and so this mantra really represents the holistic transformation that God's presence brings to all of us. Okay, so, so we'll go ahead and, and get started with this practice. How do you spell that word? Huh? So it's not how it sounds. <laughs> so I had to actually put the phonetic in my notes. It's C-H-A-L-I-Y-P-H-A-H. <laughs> not like it sounds at all. That would be the spelling bee, like, yes, right yes, now. exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Holly Fall, yes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get settled in. I just ask you to get comfortable in your chair, have your feet firmly planted on the floor. You can have your hands either in your lap or on your side, on the sides of your legs. Sit upright, but yet in a relaxed position. If you choose to do so, you can certainly close your eyes. But if that's uncomfortable for you, that's totally fine. I just ask you to have a soft downward gaze. And let's begin our practice with three deep inhales and exhales in and out.
And I invite you now to return to your normal breathing, settling into your body in this here and now moment, feeling your feet on the floor, your butt in the chair, being present in the here and now, and letting go of those things that are keeping our minds busy at this point in time and giving your permission, giving yourself permission to be here right now. Envision yourself standing inside a room with a door that leads outside ahead of you. Pull a key from your pocket to unlock it, turning the latch and stepping outside in front of you is a colorful autumn landscape with hundreds of trees with leaves and brilliant reds and golds. Some are green, not yet changed, but others have become crisp and browned on the edges. A little further ahead, water babbles down a shallow stream, only a foot or so deep in the deepest part. You can see the stones and sediment that the water travels over. Leaves that have floated down into it collect on the edges where the water ripples towards shore, creating a golden lining on the other side. You sit on a perfectly sized sitting rock on the edge, comfortable and content as the water runs by. Breathe in the crisp autumn air, filling your lungs with the scent of water, leaves, and the grasses that are yellowing around you. Feel the warmth of the sun on your face. The heat of summer is gone and in its place is this wonderfully pleasant day, just warm enough for comfort and cool enough to invigorate. As the breeze blows around you, notice the way it coaxes leaves to let go of their branches to float to the ground below. Some take a direct path, while others drift and sway in the wind, spinning and twirling as they make their way down. Others do not fall at all, but rather continue to hold on to the branches they grew from, refusing to take flight. They have allowed themselves to change colors alongside their fellows and yet refuse to give in to the descent ahead. Just a little longer, they protest to the breeze. We're not yet ready to fall. So they hold on a little longer, even as the world changes around them. The yellows become orange, the oranges become red, and the leaves on the ground become brown. But still, the leaves on the trees hold on, hoping to evade the relentless movement of time. Visualize the changing world of fall around you. And as you continue to breathe in crisp autumn air, in and out, leaning into this moment. Silently repeat to yourself the mantra, Kali fall, Kali fall, Kali fall. As you breathe in and out, bring to mind something that you have been holding on to, something that no longer serves you, or something you would like to let go of but have not done so yet. Khalifa. 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 Now imagine this thing as a leaf on a tree, clinging to a branch high above the ground, refusing to give in to the change of the season. Once it had a place in your life as every leaf has its place on a tree. This thing or leaf that you are considering does not need to be bad, it could be good. It might be a blossom you cherished in the spring of its existence 
You have watched it unfurl and grow and has now exchanged its green for gold. The time has come for it to release the branch. The time has come for you to let it go. Take a deep breath, the deepest breath that you've taken this far. And visualize the leaf letting go. It releases the branch and drifts gently to join the other leaves of red and gold below. Khalifa, Khalifa, Khalifa. Just like the leaf has not entirely disappeared, neither has the thing you are letting go of. It has joined all of the other things that you have grown with and learned from. For a moment longer, enjoy the autumn world around you. Experiencing again the warmth of the sun, the chill of the breeze, and the distant scent of leaves and earth. When you are ready, leave the side of the river and return to the door that you entered this world through. Step back inside, taking care to pull the key from your pocket to lock the door once more. This door is always available to you. You can always return to the autumn world by the river with the trees of red and gold. The key will always be in your pocket. Return your focus to your breath, breathing in and out, soft and slow, experiencing the way your lungs also release the old to bring in the new. And as we bring this practice to a close, I invite you to come back to the room, either the physical room or the virtual room, whichever one you're in. You can wiggle your fingers and your toes, perhaps move your head from side to side. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you for joining me on that visualization, that tour. I was gonna close with one more poem that, and, and it was, believe me, it was very hard for me to choose just two <laughs> poems. You can see, you know, for those of you online, you can see all my tabs that are here. So but I picked I picked another one, which I narrowed it down to 12. I narrowed it down, yeah, I know, right. I could, I, could, I could read like these all day long. But in this one, um, it just really struck me especially with what we've just been talking about. Um, and so this is written by um, William Merwin and it's called Under the Day. To come back like autumn to the moss on the stones after many seasons, to recur as a face backlit on the surface of a dark pool one day after the year has turned. From the summer it saw, while the first yellow leaves bear from their forgetting and the branches grow spare, is to waken backward down through the still water, knowing without touching all that was ever there and has been forgotten and recognize without name or understanding, without believing or holding or direction in the way that we see at each moment the air. So 
that one is that just really um, the the words in that in that poem just really strike me as that it's just the sense of impermanence, but yet at the same time some beautiful things that continue to to come every single day and that continue to transform. So thank you so much for being here today and being part of the, the prayer lab. I'm happy to stick around if there's any questions or dialogue that people want to have.